photography lets us glimpse some amazing moments of the past. There are those bizarre ones, like the exact moment Norway got its first ever shipment of bananas. Then, truly historic ones, like the survivors of the Titanic climbing aboard rescue ship the Carpathia. There are cheeky moments too, like Pablo Escobar's tourist snap in front of the White House, boldly taken while he was a wanted man. Then there are moments like the time 34 samurai visited the Egyptian pyramids and sphinx. Moments that are little more than historical footnotes, but where the crossover seems too bizarre to be real. Weirdly, this tourist snapshot came at a time when Japan was particularly opposed to international relations, the emperor going so far as to issue a command to expel all foreign barbarians from the country. So why did these samurai travel to Egypt? Why did they actually criticize the Sphinx when they saw it? And how did the true legacy of this trip end up being modern Japan's thriving wine industry? The mission was led by this guy, 27-year-old samurai Ikeda Nagaoki. And we're actually lucky that photos like this portrait, or the actual photo in front of the Sphinx, exist at all. It was only four decades earlier that experiments in photography, like Nips's rooftop snap, were producing results. And without more modern processing techniques, those results were hard to make out. The mission began in 1863, and was very near the end of Japan's samurai era, which stretched all the way back to the late 12th century, and probably even earlier. Despite a long history of military warfare and political intrigue, the last 250 years, called the Edo period, or Tokugawa shogunate, samurai largely transitioned from being the warrior nobles we usually think of them as, to bureaucrats and administrators. While not exactly historically accurate, especially in terms of Tom Cruise's character, in The Last Samurai we get a reasonable sense of what was happening in Japan at the time. The growing influence of Western power and technology threatened the traditional Japanese way of life. Ken Watanabe's character is based on the actual real-life so-called Last Samurai, Saigo Takamori, who died protesting the changes he saw happening in Japan around this time. Before this, Japan's foreign policy had been very much focused on a self-imposed isolation and seclusion. But while Japan focused on itself, foreign countries had been getting pretty good at guns and boats, and eyed Japan's convenience and strategically placed naval ports on the edge of the Pacific. In 1853, United States battleships aggressively rolled up into Edo Bay and donated a literal white flag of surrender, being like, you might need that. Recognizing that they couldn't match the American Navy's superior tech, Japan's administrative leaders, the shogunate, reluctantly signed a treaty allowing access to its ports. Sensing this weakness, European nations followed, and Japan was forced into signing a number of other significantly unequal treaties. Emperor Kōmei hated these developments, and despite never meeting or seeing a foreigner in his lifetime, wanted as little contact with the outside world of Japan as possible. Masterless samurai, Ronin, rallied to the emperor's call and publicly killed several foreigners. 34 delegates were then gathered to be sent to Europe and began the process of negotiating the reclosing of Japan, led by Ikeda. A year earlier, another group had made their way through Europe and succeeded in postponing the opening of Japan's ports, but Ikeda's group were to go even further. Their tour took them through China and India before arriving in Egypt, where they met up with Antonio Bito, the photographer who took the incredible photo in front of the Sphinx and provided us with physical evidence of one of the most bizarre history crossovers. Possibly after some of the historical context was lost in translation, one of the samurai innocently questioned, the area below the shoulders is buried in sand and cannot be seen. Why did you make something like this? As they travelled to France and met with Napoleon III, Ikeda was inspired by the technology of Western Europe, and though France declined to renegotiate the opening of Yokohama port, Ikeda thought that open trade would actually put Japan on the path to modernization and equal footing with Western powers. Despite these revelations, Ikeda was treated as a failure upon his return to Japan, but while his stories of the advantages of European technology were initially ignored, Ikeda and the team had brought back a number of books with them, detailing medical and technological information which would go on to be influential. One of the most direct lines of causation can be drawn to modern Japan's wine industry, with the Japanese documentary actually calling the expedition Wine Road of the Samurai. The expedition is a fun example of what was happening at this point in history, 
technology, particularly naval technology, was linking and shaping the world. 